Hey, what's going on, you guys? Mr. Ready One Two Three Five here again, and we're going to start something a little bit different here. I'm going to be discussing the many different genres and musical styles that the band Gorillaz possesses. Each video is going to have a certain thing. I'm going to talk about the songs that the band has done that are in that certain uh, genre or style, and um, maybe find something that suits your best musical interests, and then you would know which like songs to look for in the catalog. Gorillaz is my favorite band because they are managed to create such different styles. There's not like one consistent thing that the band does, which makes them really hard to define, but to the casual listener, they think that they could really pick it out. If you have somebody who's only heard like Feel Good Inc. or Clint Eastwood, then they would probably assume that they're probably just some type of, you know, some kind of, you know, hip-hop band maybe, along with the rap and stuff like that in there. It's only when you're able to delve into the Gorillaz catalog that you soon discover that they're made up of a whole bunch of different genres. So for part one of this new series I've started, I'm not really sure how many parts are going to be in this. I'm guessing about four or five, but um, for right now, this is part one. I'm going to be discussing the experimental side of Gorillaz, the weird stuff, the stuff that makes people go a little like, why does anybody like this? The stuff that pierces your ears and it's kind of not friendly. This video might get a little long, there's a whole lot of things that I need to talk about. Uh, some of them will be shorter than others, but uh, this is going to be the one of the longer ones. I wanted to go ahead and get this one out of the way. The first track I need to talk about, the song Left Hand Suzuki Method from the debut album, Gorillaz. I mean, what other song starts off with the sound of a bomb getting lit up? It's got these really pumping basses and these really, really funny, like, violin sections in there, and then you've got Noodle saying some nonsense over the top of it. It really hits home on that whole, like, zombie hip-hop thing that they had going on when, when they first started. I really love this song, and it deserves to be a song that you would categorize as their experimental category, because, you know, you don't really hear many things like this song. The next song is film music. Not to be confused with film trailer music. These are two totally different songs. It was actually featured on the the Tomorrow Comes Today EP that was released before the album came out. And it has to be one of the weirdest songs that they've ever done. You've got this very vulgar beat behind it. It's really like nobody knows really what instrument it is. But it really kind of gets good near the end. And they got these hip hop drums coming in over top of it. It gets really, really sick. And then they got these really high pitched synthesizers going over on top of it. It's definitely one of their more weirder songs, but it's one that I actually like a whole lot. It's pretty intense. The next song is Oh Green World off of the Demon Days album. This song's chord progression is kind of like slow and kind of like dirty, you know what I'm saying? Especially the live version of this song. The live version is a lot more intense than the studio version is. The nonsense lyrics, the really weird guitar sounds, the really swooning effects that they have near the, near the middle of the song. Um, they have a really catchy hook melody though that's really good. The, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, that's really cool. It's not one of my favorite Gorilla songs, but I still really enjoy it. There's no hate or anything here. <laughs> the next song, We Are the Happy Landfill. This song is said to be one of the most important B-sides of the Demon Days era, or Phase 2 as they like to say. It's more on the rock side of Gorillaz as well, which uh, will probably show up again in a future video. But along with the harmonicas and the, the and the whistles and the weird sounds that start off the album, and then you have the electric guitars coming in, it makes it up to be a really unique sounding song and something, once again, that you don't really hear. It's entertaining and one of my favorite B-sides, I believe. The next song, Bill Murray, which has absolutely nothing to do with the actor, by the way. This is a very experimental track. Just like this computerized beat, just moving along. And then the really cool bass solo right there in the middle, that's that's really awesome. And then you have these lyrics that don't really mean anything. Too many days to get lost. Many, many people I've known got lost. What? But still, it's one of my favorite B-sides. and A song that I can really jam out to really easily. I don't know. I'm weird, I guess. Rocket is another one that I really like off the D-Sides album. Which lyrics contain the words blah 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 blah. It also starts out like the Macarena is about to come on, which kind of tricks me sometimes. 
The music video is really cool as well. You know, the reject false icon, the Papazoo head, you know, that's really, really awesome. Different animation style that they had going on for that video too, which was really neat. Now we talk about film trailer music. This song was also on the D-Sides album, uh, the Japanese edition. It wasn't featured on the American version. But, um, it's pretty much pointless. Uh, it's, a, it's a minute and 45 seconds, and uh, it's just a scrapped idea. It sounded like they were working on a beat, and they kind of ignored it, and what they ended up with is what you hear today. It's just a little extra right there, you know. doesn't count for much, but I'm glad they released it because I like to see, like, the making of songs. That really always interests me. Now we're jumping way ahead into the future here, and we're going to talk about the fall. The first track on the fall is called Fauner to Arizona and features a really quiet electronic melody, really light percussion, and a keyboard hook melody that moves along really, really well. When I first heard it, I wasn't a huge fan of this song, but I kind of just took it for what it was and it's kind of just an intro for the fall. There are some lyrics in this song, but they've been modified so much with some sort of vo voice changer thing that you can barely make out what you say. Some people have actually been able to decipher the lyrics and I think that they're pretty much right because when I read the lyrics along with the noises that he's making, I can kind of make out what he's trying to say by reading the lyrics. Once again, not really a gorilla song that I pay a whole lot of attention to, but like I said, it's just mostly an intro for the fall. While we're on the subject of the fall, I have to talk about the song The Joplin Spider. This was one of those songs that's gonna make people go, oh my god, shut it off, shut it off. If you blast it really loud, this song could probably give you some ear damage. They have these really loud synthesizers, these really pumping drum beats. Some really unexcited Damon sounding lyrics, but I actually kind of like the lyrics to this song a whole lot. The Falls, the Shell. This song is definitely not for everybody, but it's, it's really, really on the experimental side of Gorillaz for sure. There's a whole lot of songs on the fall that I need to talk about. The Snake in Dallas is one of the more accessible songs that I'm going to be talking about on here, I think. It's just about a two minute little electronic jam that kind of just fades right into Amarillo in a way. While also being the next track that's connected onto uh, the Parish of Space Dust. So it can go either way. It's kind of like a song that attaches to the end of one, but also leads into one. So, you know, take it as what you will. <laughs> but it's one of my favorite tracks on the fall, and I still really, really like it a whole lot. Next song is called The Speak It Mountains, and some people haven't even really counted this song as actually being music. In which they're totally wrong. This is obviously a song. It just has no structure. There's some weird manipulated lyrics of some woman saying that this is the dawn. Some really electronic keyboards going in and out of there. The really ambient soundscape going on top. It just kind of fades out. It kind of ends and leads right into Aspen Forest, which is one of my favorite songs. Speaking of rarities that not many people have probably heard of, another really experimental one is the Space Monkeys theme. This song was featured on the M1A1 dub EP, and it wasn't featured on any other albums. It's probably one of the more, um, farther away from Gorillaz, Gorillaz tracks, I guess you can say, if that's weird. I think Space Monkeys had more involvement this song than Gorillaz actually did, but it's still really, really cool. The rap in it is amazing. And there's this really, really awesome bridge section in it where everything kind of fades out and then these violins come in and the electronic beat just comes back after that. It's really exciting and I actually want to use this song in a future video someday because it just sounds so epic. Which I kind of hate it wasn't featured on the Lake It Comes Home uh, dub album that they did where they remixed the entire debut album in dub edition form. I kind of hate that that song wasn't featured on this. Seeing as how it is so rare to try to get your hands on this nowadays, especially here in America, in North Carolina, no less. Another rarity we have here is a song called Dub Dumb. It was featured on an MTV Music Generator game for PlayStation 2. I don't know if it was ever released on any physical CD or not, because I have definitely never heard of it on being on any CD of theirs. It's one of those songs that I kind of forget about Gorillaz having or whatever like that because like since it isn't featured on any CDs and you can't find a download of it, I think it was one of the Phase 1 tracks, I'm not really sure, a Phase 1 B-side. But uh, it's kind of pointless and the rap on it is really neat. The rap on it is really quick. I'll let do, do like a rap on that song. 
musically doesn't have a whole lot going for it. It's just a kind of a like a bob your head type beat to it with some really Jamaican sounding rap on it. That, that's the only thing that sticks out in my mind about it. While we're on the topic of rarities, I have to talk about a song called Mix 2. You could only find this song on the Demon Days website back when the website was inside of Kong Studios. It's Plastic Beach now, but it used to be Kong Studios. If you went inside of Noodle's room on the website, there was a mini disc player sitting in the floor. And when you clicked on it, you would hear this song. It's called Mix 2. I think this is the only version that was ever like released of it. The, the versions that are out there now on the internet, somebody just recorded that off of the website and then put an mp3 out of it. It only exists in a really, really low quality form and you can't really make out what's going on. It's kind of like a little fuzzy track and Damon has this really, really high falsetto. I thought it was a woman at first, but then like I made out some things and I knew that it was his voice. Like I said, the recording is so low quality that you don't really know what to say, which makes it one of the most rare Gorilla songs that not many people know about. Another website exclusive song <laughs> was one called Mr. Softy's Balloon Race. You found this song by going to Russell's room on the website, and there was a record in the middle of the floor. If you picked that up and set it on his record player that was in his room, this song would play. And just like Vix 2, there's only a really low quality version that exists of it. It's really fuzzy, like you can't make out what's going on that, that much. There's a really fast drum beat going on, some a really, really happy keyboard section going on as well. And then you got Damon's vocals on top of that as well. I'm saying as well a whole lot. <laughs> My only problem with this song is I feel like it goes on for a bit too long. The ending kind of gets drawn out a whole lot. There's some really neat things going on throughout it or whatever like that. But it's not really a song that I find myself returning to a whole lot, I guess you could say. A Gorilla song that was only released on this Christmas album called Don Quixote's Christmas Bonanza. <laughs> this song has nothing to do with fucking Christmas. The only lyrics in it is Damon repeating over and over again, Happy Radio. Happy Radio. Happy Radio. Happy Radio. Happy Radio. And it has these ri this really creepy music. Really creepy music. It has like, it sounds like a T-Rex from Jurassic Park is like in the background. It's very, very ambient. It has this weird tribal beat going on in it. It's like, what the hell? This is nothing about Christmas. Don Quixote's Christmas Bonanza. My biggest what of this video. And last but not least, we have to talk about Glitter Freeze. Another one of the most accessible weird tracks that I'm going to be talking about. It was featured on Plastic Beach. It was kind of taken as this album's like little instrumental jam that they have on the three main albums of theirs. You know, on the first debut album there was Punk, which was the quick song. On Demon Days there was a song called White Light. And then Plastic Beach had Glitter Freeze for like their quick little dirty track. Which isn't really that quick. It's actually a pretty long song, like three minutes and something, I believe. People always compare it because it does sound a whole lot like Muse's Uprising. And I can totally get why people would say that. Once again, I think anybody can really get into this song. It doesn't sound much different than any other electronic jams out there. So yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this. Obviously, gorillas have a lot of music, so if I left out anything that you think belong in this category of music, leave a comment down there below and uh, fill in everybody. Subscribe for part two if you're a big time Gorillaz fan because part two is going to be all about Gorillaz and their world music. The instruments that were used, like their Chinese instruments, their Syrian instruments, their Middle Eastern instruments. So subscribe for that. Moody1235 out.